Hi everyone, I'm Jason Ross, the broker of Dillon Rock Hill Real Estate, and uh, this video is to teach you how to get more buyer leads from holding open houses when they are when they these are open houses that are not your listings. So on our website there is a handout uh, for you to use. Any agent can use this whether you're with our company or not, and this will help you to generate leads uh, using uh, the open houses holding open houses and uh, let's go through there's a lot of things on this list so let's dive in in the upper left section you'll see where it says selection of an open house number one look in the MLS for houses that buyers can easily find while driving now what I mean by that is homes in generally easily accessible areas of the city will be much easier for you to get buyers that will actually come to the open house if you select an open house that is up in the hills or is down some windy road or on a dirt road, you're very unlikely to get conventional buyers to actually go traveling down that road to come to the open house. So I like uh, houses that are placed somewhere that are in reasonably easy to access areas of town uh, that you can put a lot of signs out for. And we'll get to that part. Number two, choose a home with nice curb appeal. Unattractive homes may dissuade buyers from getting out of their car to actually come inside, and that's true. If the house is generally not so attractive, you might find people driving up, taking a look, and driving away. So try to find homes where at least it has some nice curb appeal. Looks like something you'd want to stop out, uh, you know, stop by and uh, take a look inside for. Number three, contact the listing agent and seek permission to hold the open house. Now that's very important. You do not want to go to somebody else's listing, even if it's a vacant listing, and hold an open house. The, pro the proper thing to do is to call the listing agent, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm so-and-so. I'm looking to get more leads. I saw you have this listing over there. Is it possible that I could hold it open on Saturday from 1 to 4 or Sunday from 2 to 5? Whatever time you want to do it. Check with the listing agent first and make sure that that's available and get their permission to do it. And number four, Verify, if they do give you permission, that the listing agent has not made the house available for another agent at that same time. It's okay to ask them uh, when they say, yeah, you know what, Let me. Uh, let, why don't you hold it open Saturday from 1 to 5 and I'll publish it and uh, get it uh, advertised and so forth. Uh, some, you, what you want to do is make sure, because sometimes they forget that they've promised it to other people. Just ask them. By the way, is it safe to say that you have not made the open house available for any other agent? and they should tell you no right from that time. But every once in a while that will prevent you from having showing up in an open house where another agent is planning to hold it open. Okay, in the upper right corner, let's look at the things that you want to avoid. You want to avoid homes in gated communities. Now remember, this is open houses that are not your listing. So I'm not talking about open houses where you have a listing, that's not what this is about at all. But rather, try to avoid holding open houses in gated communities. It becomes too much uh, logistics involved with getting people past the guard, or you have to worry about parking permits, and it's just not practical for what you're trying to accomplish. Um, try to avoid uh, homes in places, number two, homes in places that are difficult to drive. You don't want homes that are on, on far out roads or on windy roads that are uh, really narrow, uh, or things where you yourself would feel like, you know, do I really want to go see that house? Maybe I don't have to see it that much. You want to pick homes that are nice and easy to get to. Number three, try to avoid uh, unattractive homes where the buyers will not actually come out of their car to see the house. You really do want to avoid that, as I mentioned earlier. You want people to feel comfortable that they're actually going to get out of their car and come inside the house. Number four, uh, avoid condos in gated communities. It's just oftentimes too hard to maneuver or you don't know what the homeowners association rules are about you placing your open house signs. Maybe they don't want you to prop open a gate so people cannot actually get to the condo. Things like that. It's just something you want to avoid in my view. Uh, number five, listings where you want to avoid listings where the listing agent prohibits you from creating your own flyers with your own name and phone number on them. So what do I mean by that? Some agents do not want other agents holding open houses where they're going to promote themselves. But what are you there holding the open house for? You're holding the open house so that you can generate buyer leads. That's what you're there holding it for. So you want to promote yourself and you want to have flyers with your name and phone number, not the listing agent's name and phone number, so that you can make contacts with the people who are there who are coming in 
and you want to do this to promote yourself and you're using the open house for that purpose. And number six, you don't want to hold open houses where the seller will be present. Nothing is more frustrating than having a seller who is going to be there with you assessing how you are selling their house and how you're pointing out the features of the house and things like that. You don't want that. So verify with the listing agent that the seller will not be present uh, at, the, at the open house. Personally, I like doing uh, open houses that are vacant because it's a virtual guarantee that there won't be any seller there and you can usually hold them for as long as you like, of course, with the listing agent's permission. Okay, in the bottom right section, you'll see it says market the open house. These are great ideas to try and get it known to the public that you are holding an open house to increase the attendance at the open house. Number one, ask the listing agent to publish the date and time in the MLS. Now, if you are a new agent or a newer agent and you just don't know this, the listing agent can add the open house time and date to the MLS and that will feed into all the websites. It'll go into Zillow and Realtor.com and all of the other company websites, Trulia and so forth. Uh, it'll go into all of them and the public will become more aware of the open house and therefore you are more likely to have people that will attend the open house and it'll increase your visibility. Okay, so then number two, place an ad on Craigslist and using, uh, place an ad on Craigslist using the term open house in the title. When you put the title on the ad for Craigslist, put open house today and then something like that. Or you can, and don't put a whole lot of pictures of the house Maybe one picture, but that's it. You don't want to put a whole lot of pictures because you want to encourage people to come to the house. If they see the pictures and they don't already like what they see, they're not going to come to the house. You'd rather have them come to the house and they don't like the house so that you have a chance to connect with them and perhaps they will allow you to show them other homes and you'll end up selling one of those, uh, what, those people a house somewhere else. Okay. Number three, post on social media announcing the open house. So if you are on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or whichever social media you use, publish your open house on your social media sites. Maybe put a link to the open house, put some details about the open house, because even if your friends and followers on social media don't come to the open house, it's just a way for you to connect with them and they get to know, oh wow, you're in real estate. Uh, that you are holding open houses, they feel like you've got things going on, and it builds confidence in others' perception of you, and that's a great way to spread the message. And it's totally free. And number four, knock on doors nearby and invite the neighbors. You can certainly print out flyers from the MLS, completely free to do, easy to do on your, on your printer at home, and you can deliver those, maybe you staple your card to them, and you deliver those to the neighbors. You knock on the door and you say, hi, I'm Jason, I'm a realtor, I'm going to be holding an open house at 123 Main Street, uh, we're going to be open from Saturday, on Saturday from 1 to 4, would love it if you can stop by. And you just have a conversation and maybe people will come by, maybe they're thinking about selling their house, but they don't, haven't connected with a realtor and they come in, talk with you, see that you're a nice, reasonable, helpful person, and maybe they talk to you about listing their house. You never know what can happen as a result of holding open houses. You don't know who you're going to touch as a result of what you've done. So try and cast a very wide net. And that's one way you can do that. The other thing, number five, is place many directional signs out, as many as you can. And now I am a big believer that your directional signs should not be a billboard for your company. They should be about you. They should have your name on them. They should have the words open house on them and an arrow pointing the, the uh, uh, buyers to where that open house is. That's what I think an open house sign should have. But regardless of what your directional sign looks like, the more you have, the better. And find the strategic areas that you can bring in that traffic from around the surrounding area. Okay, let's go to the bottom left corner, connect with potential buyers and sellers. So two ways to go about this. This is interesting. Number one, you can prepare a flyer for free through the MLS with your name and contact information on it. Or number two, and I really like this, I've been doing this a lot, prepare an electronic flyer, which means basically a link to the listing information online with your contact information on it. Then, when the clients get there, what you do is they're going to immediately when people walk in, they're going to say, Can I have the flyer? Can I have what they call the setup sheet? And what you can say to them if you don't print a flyer is, 
sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, we don't actually print flyers for our open houses anymore. We do it all electronically. But if you give me your cell phone number, I would be happy to text you a flyer right now. And oftentimes people will actually give you their cell phone number and you can text them the flyer. Now when that happens, what you do is you have a link to the, to the uh, electronic flyer ready to go in your cell phone. They then give you their cell phone number. You send them a text that looks something like this. Hi, Jim. Thanks for coming to our open house at such and such address. Here is a link to the flyer for the house. And that's it. And then you send it to them. Then they get it. They will click on it and it will open up a uh, link to the house and the information on their phone. Now, what do they get from that? They get all the information that you would normally give them from the flyer. But what do you get from it? You get their actual cell phone number. Now, this will not work with everybody, but a lot of people will go along with this, especially as everything's moving away from paper and into the mobile cell phone age. A lot of people are somewhat receptive to this. But if they're not, you know, just offer to help them and tell them about the house and just let them know, well, I can tell you that the house is going for 500000 and it's three bedrooms, two bathrooms, 2,200 square feet, and it was built in 1986, or whatever the details are about the house. Always be helpful, and if they don't want to give you your cell phone number, uh, don't try and sell them on giving it to you. Just help them and offer to give them the uh, help uh, about the, give them the information about the house. Okay, number three, have sign-in sheet, have a sign-in sheet ready with a few working pens. And you can actually, if you don't have a sign-in sheet, you can download one from our website uh, and have a sign-in sheet ready. The sign-in sheets are basically have a spot for their name, their email address, their phone number, and when they plan to purchase, uh, things like that. And you, want to, and you want to have that ready with working pens. Bring spare pens. Nothing more frustrating than doing all of this preparation and you find out that you don't have a pen and they can't easily write down their information. Uh, number four, ask politely if the attendees would please sign in. If they refuse, do not argue. Don't argue with people when they don't want to sign in. They're probably not going to work with you and that's okay. Just focus on the next person and uh, you'll connect with, with other people. So sometimes people will feel like they are being hounded when they're being asked to sign in and they just won't do it, and that's okay. Take a look around and happy to help. Okay, number five, be helpful. Ask questions such as, can I share the highlights of the house, of the house with you? When uh, you develop a little bit of a rapport with them, ask them, when do you plan to purchase? What other homes have you seen? May I provide you with May I provide you with a list of homes that match what you're looking for? Uh, if you've developed enough rapport and you feel comfortable with them, you can certainly say, you know, you clearly you're in the market for a house. What can I do to help? Uh, should they, and believe me, if anybody refuses any assistance, just be polite. Hey, thanks. Thanks for coming in. Have a great day. And that's it. You'll deal with the next person that comes in. Want to jump back over to the bottom right where you want to have uh, the spot about develop leads. Number one. Develop a rapport. This goes along with the uh, things we were just talking about. Develop a rapport with the people who come in. Be helpful. Be helpful. Number two, be natural and conversational. There is no magic formula about what you should say when you're holding an open house. There is nothing other than your opportunity to connect with people who are in the market for a home. Some of those people are in the market to sell a home as well. So be helpful. Be knowledgeable. Be polite be responsive as they're asking you questions. Know the values in the area, which you can easily, you can easily research that even if you don't know how to use the MLS very well. You could easily research that on sites like Zillow and find out what's going on in the area. You could find out about recent solds in the area and you'll get a general idea that demonstrates that you're knowledgeable and that's what you're presenting to people. You're presenting information and you're presenting that you are the go-to person if they have real estate needs. Not everybody's going to want to hire you, obviously. Many people will have agents that they already have relationships with, but there are plenty of people. I've had lots and lots of clients that have come through open houses where I was a complete stranger. And it's a great way for no money to connect with buyers and potential even sellers. Um, so, so do those things. Number three, Ask the attendee how you can be helpful to them. We've kind of gone over that. And number four, if you don't use a sign-in sheet, ask for their phone number and email. So if you're not comfortable using a sign-in sheet and you don't want to ask people to sign in, after you've made a connection with people, just ask them if you can have their phone number and email and help them as they're, as they're getting ready to buy a house. 
you definitely will connect with some buyers. You won't connect with all of them. You won't connect with most of them, but it only takes a few to turn a big sale that might be for 300,000, could be for 500,000, and you never know by who you've touched who you'll have the opportunity to touch. So I really encourage you to pursue open houses even if you don't have listings. All of this information was if you do not have a listing. The open house things you should do for when you do have a listing is, is for another video. But I thank you very much for watching. You can call me anytime whether you work with my company or not, and I wish you great success.